Greetings, my name is Matt Faiello. I'm a technical marketing engineer, and today we're going to discuss upgrading the Cisco Intersight private virtual appliance. Let's get started. Okay, let's get inside the private virtual appliance, and uh, we're going to go to settings. We're actually going to verify our firmware version before we do the upgrade. And you want to click on Appliance. And you can see we're at version 148. So we're actually going to upgrade from version 148 to 164. Okay, so to get the bits for the firmware, we need to go to the Intersight portal, www.intersight.com, uh, and log in with the account that you created for the private virtual appliance. So we're going to go ahead and download that binary uh, from that site. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so we're out here on intersite.com, uh, Internet Accessible Machine, uh, for those in classified environments. And you can see we're going to go ahead and download uh, the 164 firmware. And uh, you select it and then hit the download button at the top left. Now, I've already done that, so I have it saved on my uh, desktop. Uh, it is a, a pretty large package, so it will take a, a little bit of time to download. Um, but let's move on. Okay, while we're waiting for the binary to download, it's a great time to go ahead and prepare as a best practice uh, for the upgrade. In doing that, uh, suggest taking a snapshot of the virtual appliance uh, in vCenter, as well as uh, within the uh, private virtual appliance, perform a backup operation, which uh, saves that file offline. So let's take care of that. Okay, so let's do our backup, and I'm accelerating through this, um, but you can see in settings to, to do a backup. We're going to SCP that off. Wait for the status to show completed. And then we can go to our server and actually check the backup and the byte size of the file, make sure it's good. And then let's flash over to uh, vCenter and let's do a normal snapshot. Almost completed here. Okay, so now we're ready for the uh, upgrade. Okay, so now we want to transfer and then upload that binary file to the appliance. And again, I've got this uh, uh, binary file already saved on my desktop. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so we're now in the private virtual appliance, going to settings and then software. We're going to hit the upload. You can see you can upload from a network share, but I've got it saved locally. And of course, this is accelerated. So you're going to monitor the upload to 100%. will take uh, several minutes after it hits 100% uh, to do all the unpacking. So just be patient, please. And then you can go look at your request in detail. Make sure everything completes green 100%. You can see the features listed there. You can view more, see everything, then hit Install Now and Confirm. Okay, let the upgrade proceed. Uh, this will take 90 minutes, but I'm speeding through this. Uh, it will pause at 14% for uh, an extended period of time. Uh, don't fret. Just let this thing work. Uh, it will also pause at 71% uh, for some time. So the bottom line is just be patient. Just monitor this and, uh, and let it go. Okay, hit 100%. Looks like we got a successful upgrade. And now we'll move on to verification of upgrade. 
Okay, so now let's verify the uh, upgrade was successful. Let's get back into the appliance and we're going to go to settings. And we're going to click on software. And you can see we've been upgraded to version 164. And we're also going to click on appliance and we can see that we're operational. And again, the versions listed out there again is 164. So that verifies we've had a successful upgrade. Okay, now that we've had a successful upgrade, I want to share a few tips with you. Um, first of all, uh, you can skip an upgrade. Okay, we don't recommend it. Uh, certainly would not skip more than one upgrade. But if you have to do it, you can. And for instance, you can go from, you know, version 148, skip 150, and upgrade to 164, as I just demonstrated in this video. Again, uh, I would recommend you stay up with the latest code, uh, but you can skip one upgrade and uh, wouldn't recommend getting uh, several upgrades behind. Uh, secondly, uh, you can install one version of the OVA and then use the latest, greatest binary uh, to complete the installation. In other words, I installed the 148 OVA um, to deploy the appliance. I didn't need to go out and download 148 binary to stay uh, in some kind of sync. Okay, I could download the 164 binary to complete the installation. So I hope that's clear. And then finally, not all the upgrades will be non-disruptive. Okay, there will be disruptive upgrades. Um, you could lose functionality to some of your services while you're doing the upgrade, even though the appliance does not do a complete reboot. Now, obviously, if we're updating something with the underlying OS, we're going to reboot the appliance as part of that upgrade. So, so what I'm trying to say here is schedule a maintenance window and schedule some downtime for the appliance to perform the upgrades. So I hope you found this video informative, and I'd like to thank you, and good luck with your upgrades.